Hi, I'm Monica Cesarato, a food and travel blogger in Venice. Welcome to Venice Meets, a series of live chats from Instagram, every day at 6 p.m. CET. Today, I will be talking to Piero Dri, a Venetian artisan who crafts oars and oar locks in Venice. Hey, la! Ciao, carissimo! Ciao! Ecco. Ciao! 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 In your shop, wow, yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, it's not, oh, it's nice. No, it's, it's really nice. It's the first, uh, you know, you're my first guest uh, actually outside of a house. Oh, wow. Okay. So, <laughs> so how are you? You gone. I'm fine because I can, in my, in my workshop, I don't know. The connection. Yeah. See. Good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and so. Uh, is there Wi Fi as so. the telephone or Wi Fi? No, no, Wi Fi, Wi Fi. Um, forse è meglio con la connessione. Vabbè, ok, con Wi Fi perché non usa il telefono. Ok, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's better. That's better. <laughs> yes, ok, yeah. perfect. Ok, okay. so. Piero, tell the world who you are. Sorry. Era meglio prima. Era meglio prima, cazzo. Eh sì. No, fatto un po più... Sì. Dove ti hai fermato? Ti sei seduto e non ha più funzionato. Esatto. Ok. Eh, ti dicono, ti dicono, sta fermo, Dri, sbassanti un pochettino che non te vedemo. Te <ride> noto. Aspetta che lo alzo, dai. Dai, <ride> è un casino qua. Dovreste sì. vedere il laboratorio. So, this is Piero's workshop in Venice. Ok, it's always full of stuff, any kind of stuff. And so, you're not supposed to be sitting. Right. Aspetta, che trovo una roba. Arrivo subito. Scusa, yeah, go, go, go. In the meantime, you can see his workshop. So, I'm telling you very quickly. Who Piero is while he's going looking for a stand or something. Piero is a orlock maker. He makes uh, orlocks not just for the gondolas but for all the rowing boats in Venice. Correct? Exactly. Okay, good. So, okay. oh, perfect. Ah, perfettissimo. Vara, anche Piero. Se vede anche tutto da Dio. Okay, Piero, how are you? We'll start again. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Monica. I'm here uh, finally in my shop after one month and a half of stop. And okay. Stop, of course, as uh, all the world. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'm very happy to to can come here and uh, start uh, very slowly again to work and to to produce something uh, with mm -hmm. love and. And to see again the the neighbor, the, the friends. Okay, so let's start from there because everybody in the last few days, everybody keep asking me and say to me, Oh, can we please uh, interview somebody who actually lives in Venice? Because we want to hear what life is like in Venice. I mean, I spoke to Marisa a few days ago and I spoke also to Luisa, but we were so busy talking about other things that I never actually asked them what it was life in the last uh, 40 days. Also because you don't live in Venice itself, you live in Murano, right? Yes, exactly. So, how hard was it? Because I know Murano was pretty much everything closed. Yeah, yeah, everything was closed and uh, uh, the, the atmosphere is so weird and strange. A uh, 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 lot of silence uh, every time during the, the day and... Uh, it's quite strange because you can see Venice and Murano as you you never can see before, and uh, so the emotions are very very particular, and um, it, it's strange. You feel you feel like in a in a movie. It, wow. Strange, and uh, very fortunately, I I live in a very quiet zone. Even without the quarantine, the lockdown. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And, uh, so I'm quite used to to the silence where I live, but not during the day in the midday. So for mm -hmm. the hours is very very strange, and so. Mm. Yeah. And 
And uh, what was transport like? Because I know they cut a lot of vaporators and stuff. Was it also hard to move away from Murano if somebody wanted to move? Uh, yes, not not so hard, but uh, obviously they cut a bit uh, the the services uh, from the island till the till Venice, and but uh, every twenty minutes uh, you have a boat uh, and oh, okay. so every ten minutes, uh, and then uh, since last week uh, I I started using my personal boat and so. Okay. I can come here every day by boat, uh, and so I can, uh, uh, as first, uh, be more safety and uh, yes. safe, also for the other people. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I can come working uh, without uh, meet uh, more a, a lot of people. Uh, of course. With the public transport and so on, and uh, as a second point of view, I can enjoy. Uh, an amazing lagoon uh, uh, because I am always yeah. alone with that yeah. water. And, and not, not taxis, not fast boats going around. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Rebirth of Vongola. Scusa, Vongola Veneta, scusa, anche le Vongole. La Voga. Wow, yeah, it must be really good. So there's this uh, part of this lockdown that's very interesting. Mm -mm -mm. So tell the, I mean, I explain quickly what you do, but tell the people what you actually, who you are and what you actually do, because, you know, I've done it very quickly, but you, you are the master. So, <laughs> you know. About my work? Yes, of course. Yeah, no, about mine, not this, not this equal for me. Uh, no, I, I'm uh, um, in Venetia. We called the name of my job uh, Remer. Uh, literally, is the the ore maker. No, it's uh, one of the may, maybe one of the most ancient jobs still active in Venice. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly as you can, you could do it uh, five hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. and officially, it is. This figure, this ore maker figure, born in uh, 13 and 7, and from this period we uh, went on to 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 produce uh, ores and the ore locks. The, the forcola is uh, the strange name of the object, uh, the wooden object uh, where the gondoliers places the the ore to to drive and to control the gondola and uh, and row. And so because we have to say the Voga alla Veneta. Uh, the way the Venetian rowing is typical only of Venice and nowhere else in the world because it's very different uh, from the other way of rowing, right? Yeah, yeah. Due to the strange, uh, to the low um, uh, depth of the water, <laughs> the average uh, water is not so high. So we need a very flat bottom boat and we need to look forward when we are rowing. And so we are. Uh, we have a standing position with uh, the oar, looking forward with uh, with this oar lock, and to to control always if uh, there are some obstacles and so on on the on the ground uh, mm -hmm. under, under the water line, and uh, um, we need an, an open oar lock, not a, a, a locked one, because mm -hmm. we constantly need to move the oar. Uh, they were on other different rowing positions to control the boats, for example, to, to move around the, the, the narrow canals in Venice. No? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, the Venice geometry is very peculiar, and so uh, we have to, to manoeuvre the boat uh, continuously in, in mm -hmm. different ways. And, and so, there are seven positions, right, for the orlock, am I right? Yeah, if, if okay. you want, I take one. Yeah. And I, well, yeah, I was hoping. I was gonna ask. I was worried. But the 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 internet will go. <laughs> bye bye. Fight fight. Okay. okay. Good. Oh, by the way, guys, Pierre is so nice that if you ever are in Venice and you stop by in his workshop uh, and you say hello, he'll do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to buy of something for me, okay? But they oh. got to buy something. <laughs> well, yes, they do. <laughs> Bye. This is the um, 
the classical, the traditional forcola uh, used uh, by the gondoliers on the back mm -hmm. row in position on a gondola. As you can see, is high mm, about uh, one meter, and uh, uh, this this part goes uh, uh, inside. inside of the, the gondola side, and you can see just uh, this uh, this curve. No? It's a, um, a unique piece of uh, walnut wood, usually, because it's very strong, elastic. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a 12 years old Ford Cola, more or less. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, it's a bit worn out here. Okay. And you can, I don't know if you can look how yes, it, the, wood, uh, the wood shines, no? Yes. Because it works out very, very smoothly. Uh, with yeah. the daily work. Uh, yeah, it's a wear and tear, wear and tear, wear and tear, yeah. yeah because a gondolier put the oar here, and the main, mm -hmm. this is the main rowing position, okay? But uh, you have to think that the oar is very long, and so sometimes when, I, when I'm rowing in a very tiny canal, so, or uh, yeah. I meet another gondola in the opposite direction, I, I can't uh, uh, occupy uh, a lot of space on so my right side. So I have to move the oar from here to another rowing position, for example, here. And oh. uh, I, I row more parallel to the axis of the boat. I don't know. Okay. okay. Uh, sometimes I can move the oar here to turn to the left very quickly or to move the, the gondola without a turn. And then we have two important positions uh, for braking. Uh, one is this one, the another one uh, lower. Uh, depending on if you want to break uh, remaining straight on or uh, uh, turning during the braking um, operation. Okay, mm -hmm. if I turn to the left or to the right. So, and then obviously the um, this position, it's used uh, to row backward. So after stopping the boat, I can turn on myself and row uh, backwards. So there are six, seven different positions. It's yeah. like a, um, a gearbox in a car. Yeah, exactly. Yes. In a way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, and the, the size of a forcola changes also according to the boat, right? Because it's not just for the gondolas, this. This is for all rowing boats using Venice, right? Yeah. If the. Um, Every, every kind of boat, uh, Venetian boat, uh, has a different size, uh, different, uh, depending on the different use uh, it was project for, no? Mm -hmm. uh, for fishing, for carriage, uh, any kind of stuff, uh, and so on, for people. And, uh, and so every time we have to find the, uh, the best balance, the best setup between the, the, the rower, the, the forcola, the, and the boat, no? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, we must, it, it's a very technical uh, word because uh, uh, we have to find uh, the, the best library system possible mm -hmm. and, um, and try to, to, to find uh, for each boat and each different posi uh, position, rowing position, but also for the, for the different rower every time the, the best uh, solution. So usually the gondoliers have uh, uh, their personal formula to work uh, and every mm -hmm. time is different. We take this measure from here till the main rowing position and uh, it changes for example from 46 centimeters till uh, 55 centimeters depending yeah. on the fullness. Uh, the Very unique, each one is a unique piece. Yeah. Yeah. And also because I suppose since you always use, you always use walnut, right? Yeah. You were saying. And also the tree is different, so of course you, you go also to follow one way. Yes, exactly. Sometimes the, the models are very, uh, for example, for racing, uh, the forcola is completely, uh, the, the, the main rowing position is completely moved forward respect to the... Uh, the sli more like that then. Okay. I have to, to choose... Uh, 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 a log, uh, a wooden log that uh, allows me to, to, to follow the, the grain every time. So every mm -hmm. time I have to study the piece, uh, walnut, and decide uh, uh, which kind of forcola uh, take off from the, this. Uh... Ah, this is obviously is all done by hand. 
Of course, yes. Okay. Uh, how long does it take you, more or less, uh, give and take, on an average, to make one, a basic one, let's yeah. say, not a, a very ornate one? Depends. For, uh, for this model I showed you, is uh, it's about one week work, starting okay. from the, I have to to buy the the fresh uh, locks uh, mm, mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, usually, I I do um, a natural seasoning for about uh, two, three, four years. It depends okay. uh, because the, I have to to work on a stable. Uh, Uh, piece of walnut okay no, this is interesting that you have to get your stuff so much in advance because you have to think two years ahead uh, what exactly. you could be selling exactly. so you might buy too much you might buy too little yeah. wow and uh, it, it also like situation like this are really bad then because uh, you, you will go way behind Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I, I bought some trees uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, I I scheduled to to buy something else this year. But uh, from economic point of view, I don't know if it will be possible. Of course, so, of course. because uh, uh, you you can't uh, uh, buy the tree uh, every month, but you have always to. to the winter time no yeah, so yeah. you have to to program the 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 <laughs> sorry the, the purchase oh, well, i never yeah. even realized about this i was thinking you know that you were getting your wood already cut and prepared i didn't realize that you actually had to buy the tree as such and the old season and everything oh my god <laughs> no it's very it's very i i i lack so much uh, to this this um, step of my job because uh, you are uh, really in, in contact with with nature and mm -hmm. uh, um, so what do you go piero what do you go in the forest and you say i want this tree and i want this tree and i want this tree they are already cut trees ah, okay otherwise you could put the no. name on it piero piero <laughs> i have to choose through uh, a lot of trees of course Depending on the size, the, the shapes, and so on, because uh, uh, they are not always perfectly round, circular, but sometimes mm -hmm. they grow up uh, a bit. Also, because uh, you, you don't make just four colors, you make the big the ores as well. So I suppose exactly. that's. Uh... My, uh, the, the ore maker uh, traditionally uh, makes uh, the ores and uh, the four colors. So I made the, uh, the horse too with another timber because I use uh, mm -hmm. exotic wood uh, growing um, only in Indonesia, Malaysia. And um, so, uh, what, this was your choice or is something from the tradition? It's an evolution of the tradition because uh, mm -hmm. we, we use this kind of wood that's uh, called ramen since mm -hmm. uh, 60 years old. 60 years ago, sorry. And uh, earlier, uh, the, the ancient ore makers used to, um, to carve the ores uh, using the, the beech wood coming from the, the closest mountains to, to yeah. Venice, no? Uh, the, the Republic of Venice uh, uh, had a very big uh, forest and woods yes. close to yeah. the sea. To, to to get all the the, the, the wood uh, for, yeah, yeah. Uh, for everything for the houses uh, everything no? so they they were very very important now we we changed the the material because this ramen uh, it, it's better because it, it's a bit lighter than beech wood uh, it's not so flexible as the beech wood and uh, even if it's not so it lasts a bit uh, less time but um, the, the the rowing move uh, is very easier mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a very important uh, thing is that they all remain straight uh, with ah. water instead okay. of good tends always to to move and it's very very difficult to select uh, a perfect mm, tree For, mm. for making the ores. Mm. Do you actually 
Do, do you know the, the origin of the word for color or, or not? Do you the know where it comes from? Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a name that mm, comes from the fork. It's ah, because it looks like... Yeah. yeah. Something ah. with the uh, contains. Uh, yeah. And so this, this, this is the reason why... It, it's, of course. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because the, the original fork didn't have uh, three or four things. It only had the two ones. It was like this, yeah. Back, yeah. And the fork was invented in Venice. Let's yes. remember this. Uh, really? No, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Piron. 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 Do you actually supply only to Venetians or do you actually have people from all over asking you for, uh, you know, whatever is a fork or even uh, your, your uh, oars? Yeah, I... Uh, my, my choice to, to, to do this mm, in my life uh, is uh, very uh, strictly connected to the city, because, to, to, to Venice, because I want to, uh, to work for Venice for Venetians. But fortunately, uh, the, the Venice tradition is mm, a lot, a appreciated a lot uh, uh, even around the world. So there are a lot of rowing clubs. Uh, mm -hmm. In the US, Australia, Germany, Europe, uh, everywhere. And sometimes I work for them, of course. I ship uh, the, the four colas. And uh, the ore is a bit complicated due to the land mm -hmm. and because the, the shipping is very, very expensive. Yeah, and, and I suppose complicated as well because a four class suppose more or less you put in a box, <laughs> but a big ore is long and it big complicated. Ore, yeah. Yeah, it's very expensive the shipping, but uh, sometimes uh, I I ship them. And mm. uh, another another uh, part of my job is to to sell also the the forcola as a sculpture because they yeah, have yeah I was about to ask you that very strange uh, shapes, uh, very sculptural and artistical ones. So um, some somebody loves to to place the forcola in the dining room as a piece of art. So I yeah. ship you can turn it into a lamp uh, if you want uh, if you want it to into a lamp. Ah, oh, I, yeah. I, I, made, I made it. Yeah, oh, you made it. Yeah, that's it's it. Okay, uh, San Francisco now. Yeah. Ah, I see. <laughs> so, how did you start? How did you get into this? I I really needed to to come back to my origins. Mm hmm. Uh, and to come back to the real uh, life in Venice and uh, in so you are Venetian you are I'm not gonna say doc because I hate to say DOC but you're a Venetian born and bred yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay I, born in Venice I always lived in Venice uh, uh, but during the university I I missed the the um, the, 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 the physical contact with the city, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, you can appreciate the, the real life in Venice uh, only if you live uh, the, the, the true um, daily life uh, and not just to uh, come and back uh, in yeah. out of the city, you know. And so if you, if you are in uh, the, the real life, you can also love to, to live here. And so I, um, when I was 22 years old, more, more or less, I, I, need, I needed to, I felt this uh, need to, to come back to this real mm -hmm. life. And the only one way for me was to uh, try to do something um, uh, in, with the boat, uh, with, the, with the rowing. Because you don't come from, you, you don't come from a family of warlock makers, right? No, of course not. No, no, no. Okay. My, my, my brother uh, worked uh, in a um, in a yard uh, for for gondolas uh -huh. uh, for twelve years. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, but no, no, we are not. Uh, we, I I, I row since I was a child, of course. Mm -hmm. It's of course, part yeah. of me. Rowing is part of me, and I love the 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 quiet city, the lagoon, uh, so. So, so one day I knocked uh, on the door uh, of my master, Paolo Brandolisio, and uh, I am very grateful to him because uh, day by day he, 
uh, I could uh, I could learn uh, this this fantastic uh, uh, work. I, I I very uh, happy to to do this job because I think that uh, it's very I don't know it's uh, very similar to my to my character. Mm. From my point of view, we, I, I can be free to be artistical. Mm -hmm. and from the other point of view, I must to be very precise and technical. So putting mm -hmm. together these two elements uh, on the four cola, I'm always happy. It's always a new challenge, and uh, um, since I I make this job, uh, I'm al always every morning I'm laughing. So you, I, you, you go into. If I always say your perfect job is when uh, you wake up in the morning and you're happy to go to work. I, Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. that's when you have a perfect job. But how long did it take you before you became to become a, ma a master yourself? Uh, now I, I do it since 15 years. Uh, so after six, seven years, I decided to open my, my, my workshop. So after five, six years, you... Kind of. If you have a talent, of course, because you need the talent as well. Like yeah. all things. Yeah. Yes. But well, well, and what you are doing. But, 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 but let's say, come on, let's be honest. Is the difference between becoming a master in something and becoming somebody an artisan that always works for somebody else? The ah. master means that uh, he's got also the extra you have, talent. Yeah, you have to to make, to do a, a step uh, upper yeah. and yeah. Uh, and become owner and. Also responsible of everything. Of you got also you got also a business sense. Uh, yeah. La Maria mi dice, fatti raccontare di dei truccioli. Dei truccioli. Dei truccioli. Uh, okay. okay. I don't even know how to say that in English. Truccioli. Uh, what's that? Um, the the means of the wood. I think it's called. Guys, English guys, when you when you cut the wood and you have the little bits, what do you call it? Perché vuoi sapere dei truccioli? <laughs> Cosa fai con i truccioli? <laughs> yeah, what do you do with us? I don't know. She said, fatti raccontarle dei truccioli. I don't know. I, uh, Marisa, dacci un, una clue qua, perché non so di cosa ti stai riferendo. Well, she, she'll tell us in a minute. I just wanted to know one thing, and I forgot now, because Marisa distracted me. <laughs> oh, yes. No, no, no. I forgot. So, no, yeah. she had yeah, but I don't know. Marisa wanted to know something about it, but I don't know. Oh, you give them away, she says. I, I, recently, I, I gave a lot of um, wood shavings to a friend of mine to, to make some, come si chiama, cuscini. Ah, uh, pillows, pillows. Yeah, exactly, some pillows. And uh, I don't know, or during the Christmas time, uh, uh, for the pillows, not very good if you're allergic. No, no, no. They are. Um, I, I bring up the the um, the new ones, so they are not uh, dirty. They are. No, but still, if you're allergic, like I am, would I dust the <laughs> <laughs> well, she said for the children of San Martin. You gave it to the children for San Martin. Oh, that's why she was saying yes. Uh, Okay, 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 okay. Okay, or thanks, Marisa. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, go on. Explain what you did then for the children of San Martino. Go on. <laughs> she was. <laughs> no, it was for, uh, yeah, because we have uh, something similar to Halloween here in Venice. When the, and that's also my, my birthday, the ah, of, uh, okay. November. And uh, so uh, it's... So, by the way... And by the way, this year was a major evening. <laughs> this year was a... Last year, sorry. 2019. Yeah. We'll, we'll never forget the night. <laughs> no, your fault. It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking some beers with friends and then... Uh, how, did, yeah. how did you get back home? Were, were you at home or yeah, as first I, I came here uh, in workshop to to try to to save uh, everything. Okay, uh, sorry. Let, let me explain why the eleventh of November was his birthday. There is this big celebration that we speak about in a minute. But 
the night between the 11th and 12th, there was a major, major, the biggest aqua alta in like uh, nearly 100, uh, well, 80 years or something like that. So it was a big thing. Scusa, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was very, very dramatic night and uh, a very tiring night because uh, after... Uh, Take up every get up everything here in uh, in my workshop. Uh, I I must go to to Murano Island, and with high water and yeah. uh, very very strong uh, wind storm, yeah. it was very very dangerous to go there. And uh, the the boat the the public boat service uh, didn't do the complete uh, uh, turn around. Yeah. Yeah around the, the island so by by foot i i managed to to reach my home but it was complete yeah yeah till here. Oh but, even your, your house completely down yeah it's been very very tiring uh, and uh, from the physical and the uh, psychological what about the workshop was it really badly damaged uh, fortunately, no, because we mm, four or five friends of mine, we we managed to, to save um, everything. Uh, just this machine, uh, uh, but not so important damages. Fortunately, just a computer, and uh, because I was prepared to to the fact, but not to a uh, high tide. Yes. Wow. I was just prepared. Uh, at home, uh, just a few centimeters inside. Uh, and, uh, oh, that's from... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as one thing, uh, obviously, between the Aqua Alta and this, uh, we haven't been working much as usual. And I wasn't, you know, when I introduced you this morning, I was going to say, like, uh, one of the last two Orlock makers. And then I stopped myself. I thought, no, enough of that. We had, you know, the discussion with uh, Marisa about this, uh, all this sensationalism. I said, no, let's see, I'm not going to say any more the last one because I'm fed up now. <laughs> so it's one of, <laughs> one of, okay, but okay, let's explain one of, but you know, there's only three of you in Venice at the moment. Yeah, there are four. four. Oh, four. Yeah. Okay, but that's only because, of course, there are less boats. Yes, of course, then by um, all the business is, has changed so much during the last 50 years because. Obviously, but in the six years after the the, the, the birth of the the motor boats, uh, mm -hmm. the, the numbers of rowers went down a bit, and then uh, with Vogalonga, uh, yes. the introduction of Vogalonga and so on, we are trying to, but it, it's not it's not easy because in, in this. Today we have a lot of motorboats, big waves, uh, yes. uh, very very strong um, uh, water um, uh, current uh, stream. No, the water is very very uh, strong, so it, it's difficult to to row sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like to be on a river, and uh, due to the Mose works uh, and so on. Of course, so it, it's not easy to to go on uh, rowing. And uh, I, I think that four workshops are enough for this. Yeah, yeah, four. Yes, and uh, every everybody works in a different part of part of Venice. Yes, of course. We, we try to to be friends and. Uh, like it would have been in the old days during the, 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 the Great Republic of Venice, the the businesses were located in different parts of the city, competing but without going crazy against each other. The way there was enough work for everybody. And that's how it's supposed to be anyway, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. One interesting thing that you told me once is that, of course, because this is a very, very ancient uh, art, because it's an art, you, there are even the tools, and you got to make your, your own tools, haven't you? No, yeah, of course, it's a, it's a, an interesting paragraph of, of the... Can you, show, can you show us some of them? Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, yeah. Ti me fa morir. Okay. No, ti me fa morir, ti me fa morir da ridere. The plane? 
I use for I use for the horse, as you can <laughs> see. Yeah, it's, it's and, uh, uh, yeah uh, I made it, of course, but this not so difficult. Uh, I think everyone can make a, a play with some patience. And uh, another very important tool is uh, wait a moment. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. we're not going anywhere. This one, okay. Ah. Uh, we good. have a two, uh, yeah. Different different sizes, uh, uh -huh. uh, according with the different um, surface. I, I have to work uh, on on the formula when I when I make. Because that, that's the one that you use that I'll show you using to do the yeah. the movement, yeah. Okay, I, I, I use them this way. And this blade uh, is is like a sort of large chisel. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where, where you cut the cheese thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the blade to cut the cheese. Yes. And they are they are so simple, but uh, uh, the the ones you can find uh, uh, already already done. Yeah. In the, the industrial ones. Industrial ones are not uh, usable by by us. And uh, we we have always to to ask to another craftsman, a metal worker. And, okay. Uh, so it's a it's a very interesting team because it's the the collaboration between the. Different yeah, of course, he, he is an artisan from Venice. He's a Venetian artisan. Uh, the name is Erbas, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he, he worked uh, also in Venice since uh, until uh, five years ago. Oh, okay. Now he work. Uh, he work. Uh, he works outside Venice, but he's very, very able, uh, and uh, he is an artist too, and uh, he understands perfectly the because we need uh, very precise angles, uh, the curvature mm -hmm. of the tools, uh, uh, uh -huh. because uh, the wood is very hard, fine. and uh, the the detail is very fine. So mm -hmm. we have to. To, uh, to go in the, the, the matter and... Mm, yeah, and lift it up. up. And we're talking about wood, and with your, only with the strength of your arms. There yeah, is no... Special, uh, you, you develop uh, this part of the, the arm. Yeah, and of course. At the beginning, I remember it was a, a tragedy <laughs> because it seems so simple, but to, to learn now, to, to use them in the best way, you need uh, two years. Of daily work, uh, okay. the end, you are owner uh, of the of the tool, and you can uh, lead it uh, uh, through the the wood. Mm -hmm. um, Piero, somebody, a friend of uh, the wife of a gondolier, once told me that uh, if you ever, she said to me, if you ever receive a forcola as a present, insure it straight away. <laughs> Put it inside a nice box and make sure that nobody's stealing because they're very precious, right? In fact, at night time, the gondoliers take them yeah. away. They don't leave them there because we're talking about money above all if it's a nation for yeah. color, right? Uh, also, uh, even it, even because it's uh, very customized, no? So yeah. if you if you lose it, uh, you are. Uh, without uh, the, the main uh, working tool uh, the, the next day. And so it's, it's for these two reasons. Uh, how long does it last a Forcola on an average? But uh, we can say 15 years if you are a oh, okay. uh, For a private user also for, for a life. Uh, I use sometimes the, my grandpa's Forcolas too and they are the um, the main position that we call the bite because it bites the the ore uh, becomes uh, always uh, larger and larger and so mm -hmm. after yeah fifteen years the ore starts to to move uh, okay. but it's not a problem uh, usually after fifteen years uh, the gondolier has to change some important parts on the gondola too okay. And well, in this occasion, sometimes they sell the old gondola to a younger gondoliers, to okay. younger gondoliers and uh, they order a new gondola. And, okay. Uh, 
usually they order uh, a new four color. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I have a, uh, okay. So if I, um, or stupid question, I know. If you have your own four color, does this mean that if you go and use different boats, you can take the four color and move it from one boat to another? Let's say, you know, you, or no? Yes. Uh, yeah, we have to decide it when I make the new four color because uh, uh, sometimes, for example, for racing boat, uh, the, um, the 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 um, the hole uh, uh, that's uh, on the boat where you can put the the four color, mm -hmm. it, it's a bit it's large, so it allows to change the four color. But okay. For the private boats. Uh, yeah. Uh, they have specific sizes and usually, usually when I make the new Forcola, part of my job is also to fit perfectly the Forcola on that specific boat. So okay. every time okay. you can put it inside without uh, using other wedges or uh, <laughs> and, and yeah. other tools to, to fix it because we don't use uh, screws or uh, uh, glue, anything. We always... Uh -huh. Put in and take it off. Okay. Do you think you're gonna get an apprentice? 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 <laughs> Can't say the word. Un apprendista. <laughs> apprenticeship. Apprenticeship. I, I, I hope. Uh, yeah. I hope uh, to 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 manage to to find some somebody. I don't know when because I, I need to to be to have a a very stable business it's not so oh, easy oh, to, oh. No, no. I, I understand i mean in a yeah. good uh, in a good year uh, i mean uh, yeah i i like to, to do it because uh, to to transmit the the the, the, the working tradition, yeah. and uh, because uh, when uh, we during the, the years, uh, you, you understand that it's better to uh, put more attention to some to some details and uh, for the production and maybe something else you can uh, you can teach uh, to, to other I don't know younger people or mm. guy to, to do it so to but it's strange but I hope to <laughs> to find I'm gonna ask you a sore question now <laughs> so give me all your eye yeah. How do you see the future for your job and for Venice? Honestly, we, I'm not fishing for, you know, you know, I'm not trying to be the, uh, the voice of doom. On the contrary, I'm totally against it. But, you know, just to get a bit, you know, a feeling from you that you're there, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's very, it, it, it's a very difficult question. And uh, I, every day I, I asked this question to myself too because uh, when when I started, I I always uh, um, uh, believe in, believe in in a, in a dream, you know, about mm -hmm. Venice, about the the, the Venice life e ideal uh, lifestyle. And uh, but with the with the years, you you grow up <laughs> a bit. Uh, you are. Uh, less uh, a bit less dreamer and uh, so sometimes you have to compromise yeah to 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 think also to to the to the bad uh, aspect of, of the city of venice and so on sometimes it is very it's very difficult because uh, even if you are uh, believing in a project everything around you seems to be against you against yeah. you so um, Sometimes you have to find uh, the, the right way to maintain uh, the, your dreaming mind uh, active. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's not so, so easy. Yeah. And, uh, that's another aspect that uh, I think that uh, all of us uh, making this kind of works uh, of jobs uh, are um, we, we d deciding to do this kind of jobs, uh, traditional jobs. We uh, have also decided to to be active in Venice or uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes active uh, so you, you have you, you must have a, 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 a precise idea of Venice yes. and a very real one you can't yes. uh, 
yeah, you can't. Uh, you yeah, I, I think that what's happening is for all these years, uh, so many of us wanted a different Venice, but obviously that needed to be achieved slowly. And instead, all of a sudden, it's pop. Now, there, you have the empty. What do you want to do with it? The problem is that that's not what people meant. We wanted the empty, but of the mass tourism, not of tourism in total. It was meant to be a quality tourism. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit, um, you know, I wonder a bit, you know, your situation in a way, and those of all, like you that do, Artisan work connected more to the life of the Venetians rather than luxury. Okay. Um, I think, do, do you think you're going to be a bit, you know, once you start opening again, you're going to be affected a little bit? Because, of course, uh, the people, as you say, the majority of people that come from you are Venetians and it's for the daily use that they need. But then again, if the gondoliers are not working, they're not going to wear and tear their forklifts, so they're not going to need new forklifts. So I don't know. It's all connected even if you don't want to, in a way. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's very... Uh, I don't... <laughs> in these days, I'm not thinking about the future. Because no, no. Of course, no. I, I think uh, I'm thinking day by day uh, to what I can do every day. And uh, we, we need, uh, of course, to be helped uh, to... To, to be part of a, a, a real system of the city, yes. you know? Because till uh, mm, one month ago, everything was going on, no? And, uh, and no, nobody seemed to, to care uh, about us, no? And uh, now maybe... Well, uh, now, now it looks to you like they care? Mm, okay, well. Mm. <laughs> Do you think now they care what month on? Hmm. No, no, but now we, we arrived to a, a no return point. Uh, ah, yeah, a point of no return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now it's not, um, we, we the, the, I don't know, the, the stream is, uh, is, fini is finished, no? And yeah, we, yeah. We have to, to start uh, again to do something. And it's not... Uh, um, uh, it's not, uh, si dice? Non è scontato che sia così. Oh, yeah, it's not granted, it's not given for granted. Yeah, yeah, it's not given for no, granted. Uh, maybe we, we have to find a way to, to go on together, and, yes. Uh, and we need, of course, uh, a Venetian uh, administration, a Venetian idea, idea for the future because, uh, alone we we. We can't uh, do so much, in my opinion. Mm. Some businesses could mm, go on in the same way. Uh, some businesses, no. Some no. I would say that the majority can't. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I was talking just uh, uh, two days ago with Jill, uh, my friend Jill, the, the finance journalist from Dublin. She was saying that this is the time where really Venetians should put aside all their squabbles and stuff and really as marisa says now have a common project so agree yeah, that yeah, it shouldn't be about politics anymore it shouldn't be about uh, money anymore it should be guys uh, if we don't want to drown because it's a question of drowning now we have got all to go but uh, not in different direction and one with a bigger or and one with a smaller or we should just be the same the problem is that uh, at the moment, I hear people talking, but I don't see where it should be from the high. Somebody say, okay, let's have a committee, let's have a, a, a team or, or, you know, a task force or something made of people from all different fields of the city. And people, and I'm not talking just the professors and stuff like that. I'm talking about also normal, real yeah. people, the real problem that are being practical, that yes, you have a big idea because you, you have a professor, but I'll bring you down a little bit because I'll tell you, okay, uh, you have this idea, but how do you do this, this, and this? I don't okay. see that we'll have a moment. And I think that's what we need. We need more housing. You know, all these are apartments now that are empty with Airbnb. They should do like they're doing in Dublin. All of a sudden, the Airbnb people, owners, realize that they're not going to make any money. They're renting it again to the locals. And that's what they should be doing, you know. Um, 
And that way, if you have more local livings, you get more shops, you get more shops, you get more money coming in. It's just, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. We need a, a very uh, longer view project, no? Yeah, and I think that's the problem, isn't it? We missed it uh, completely in the last, uh, I don't know, 80 years because uh, Venice de developed, developed, developed uh, without uh, uh, an idea. And yes. There are some parts of Venice I always think to the part of uh, Piazzale Roma, Tronchetto Island, uh, uh, the Santa Marta and so on. They are very big areas without uh, a precise idea to how use them. And, yes. Um, in my opinion, they are mm, so strategical our areas because uh, with a direct uh, uh, link to the airport, they are quite close and uh, yeah. interesting also for for some big companies like in the past and uh, in my opinion re uh, pro re projecting this part of Venice mm -hmm. even uh, also um, uh, destroying for example the 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 main uh, garage and make it uh, new on another place okay for Venetians uh, that yeah of course to have there's something I never understood. It really bugged me this about the fact that if a Venetian has to have a car, yeah, of course, and Venetians do have car, they are forced to pay a lot of money for parking. It. It's yeah. ridiculous. I'm not saying that they shouldn't pay money, but definitely not the kind of money that is paid. It, it really, I know, you know, for for a Venetian, it's not a luxury to have a car. It's a necessity because many times in Ven no, in the sense, no, no, I mean, many times in Venice, at the moment, I mean, you have the small shops, but if you want to buy something a bit more, you need to go away from Venice. Yeah, to go away, but just to go, I don't know, I always travel to, to the mountains, to, to other parts of Italy. Uh, so. You're, the only, well, you, you're yeah, one of the things in Italy that does it. <laughs> Come on, uh, I miss uh, that. I miss that. Drive, okay. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, we should uh, have a place where to park a car, but cheaper. That's all I'm saying. You know, it, 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 I think it's a bit crazy, the, the, yeah, the price. Part of the... Yeah, we, we need to... To, um, to have uh, new uh, working possibilities inside Venice. Yes. We need to limit uh, the, the transfers in and, and out the city because now, nowadays the paradox is that uh, in the morning a lot of people come here to work in the city and a lot of Venetians uh, go away to, to work outside Venice. It's a mystery. Yes. And so... I think that uh, I, it's very, very relaxing to to work uh, uh, close the the place where of you. Course. Live. Of course. Yeah, but, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but Piero, if a house price in both to buy and to rent are outrageous, no. obviously I can't live in Venice. Yeah, yeah, of course. We we need to 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 um, to have uh, work uh, working places working new i don't know to to be interesting for for some yes. to great uh, uh, occupation yeah. uh, and uh, to to create a, a new society who needs uh, houses and so we need also a, a very specific residential program and uh, without thinking to speculation uh, that's we need and so yeah. The problem is we need, we want, uh, are we going to get it? I don't know. We can try. I mean, I think maybe what, what Jill was saying, I think he was trying, she was trying to say that this is a moment that maybe Venetian could put their foot down and bind together to fight for it. I don't know. We I hope, but I, I'm not sure it will be. So anyway, if people want to come and visit when they finally they will be able to come back to Venice. Where do they find you in Venice? I'm very close to the main street. That's Strada Nova from uh, the, the railway station. From the yeah, McDonald's, that maybe we close. Ah. <laughs> Let's hope. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I close uh, the the ferry, the traditional ferry service from Strada Nova to to Rialto Market. Okay. And, 
Uh, but you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Il Forcolaio Matto. Oh, by the way, let's explain that Il Forcolaio Matto is your invention, the name Forcolaio, because the word doesn't exist. If I, some, some colleague <laughs> ate me or did, because I'm not uh, philologic. <laughs> but know. to me, it sounds, so much, it sounds so much like Alice in Wonderland. He's so good. I love it. Yes. Yeah. I, so... You have to go on being smile, smiling. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, well, look, you know, have to. But I'm probably not going to be working for a year again, but never mind. Listen, Piero, it was so nice, so nice to see you in your shop. So yeah, did you actually open you. today? Did you open today? Person, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's good. So it's a good job that you were still in place. Yeah, we, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, va bene, sì, beh, va bene, you got things to, to do, haven't you? Haven't you got back, back work to do or not? I, sorry? Have you got back work to catch on? Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah, I'm here and uh, I, I wait for... <laughs> and you don't have your mask and you don't have your gloves. Mm, naughty, naughty. <laughs> oh, you got them. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, or, okay, yes. Well, that's definitely the mask to have, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, you're safe. <laughs> Dana, listen, yeah. have a great end of uh, 25th of April. Don't drink too much. Be careful that they don't stop you on the boat while you're going home and they give you a fine from drink driving. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us. And I hope to see you soon next time I'm passing. I'm coming to say hi to you. Okay. Ciao, Piero. Ciao, carissimo. Ciao, ciao. Grazie ancora. Bye.